Hi, I'm Stuart Bailey, curator of Wings Over the Rockies Air and Space Museum. And in this episode, we have got something really special. We are getting a new airplane for the museum, a short vertical takeoff and landing subsonic light attack aircraft the McDonnell Douglas AVA B Plus Harrier II. We'll be getting an inside look at what it takes to make a military aircraft into a museum display and follow the journey of the Harrier as it goes from the flight line to the museum. Everything that we're pulling out is strictly underneath panels that the public is not going to see. It can be a bit emotional at times. You grow attached to them. It's a pretty special thing to be able to see this historic airplane uh, kind of to its end. It's a point of pride for the Marine Corps. This is going to be cool. It's time to go behind the wings. The Harrier's unique vertical short takeoff and landing technology revolutionized military aviation and expanded where and how aircraft could operate. The Harrier II was in service with the Marines for over 40 years, starting in 1985. Today, only one Marine squadron remains in service with Harrier operations to fully end by 2027, replaced by the F-35B Lightning II. Ryan Gettinger is a pilot in Marine Attack Squadron 231. He took off in Harrier Bureau number 165587 for the jet's final mission from Cherry Point Marine Corps Air Station to Buckley Space Force Base. What's it like to fly the Harrier? Special and a challenge, uh, kind of all in one. Um, for people who aren't familiar, the Harrier can uh, conduct flying essentially like a normal aircraft, um, but we also have a set of four uh, nozzles that we can vector all the way down, uh, essentially to 98 and a half degrees, which puts them straight down at the ground with our nose sitting about eight degrees high. Um, and that kind of transition between flying standard configuration versus being able to come all the way into a hover at zero knots of airspeed uh, is definitely a challenge. It's an entirely um, hydraulic and mechanically controlled aircraft, no fly-by-wire. Uh, we do have some limited kind of uh, stability systems on board, um, but from day one, kind of what we train to is that it's a, it's a pretty challenging aircraft to fly. This is the airplane's last flight. What does it mean to you personally to kind of take it on its journey forward to uh, being a museum piece? This flight, uh, especially incredibly special for me. First full gray jet uh, aircraft that I've flown in the military, first squadron uh, with the spades there. Um, is, is very, very special for me. Uh, and then getting, like I said, to put this thing on display for, for some young guys to come see. Uh, obviously, they won't get to fly the Harrier specifically, but the legacy of the Harrier is going to live on with the Marine Corps, uh, with the F-35 Bravo, F-35 Charlie, kind of the, the path that we have paved and those capabilities to do um, operations so close to shore. Never know where the world is going, um, but the Harrier has definitely kind of set the groundwork is a pretty special thing to be able to see this historic airplane uh, kind of to its end. Tell us a little bit about the landing here today. So came in uh, for what's called the carrier break. The naval aircraft will approach the carrier, but it's how we also approach when we go into the LHD that we discussed uh, kind of being out on earlier. Here with the altitude, the temperature today, uh, the altimeter, all those factors, the aircraft doesn't have quite enough engine power um, to hover a mile high up in the sky here. So opted for the rolling vertical landing, kind of still show off that slow flight capability of the Harrier nozzles around 70, 75 degrees. So you can imagine about 10 to 20 degrees uh, kind of pushing me along there. And now it goes for D-Mill, which we'll have a crew out here a little bit later yeah. today and uh, we'll be starting working on that, taking off uh, everything that has to go back to the Marine Corps. <laughs> Captain Gettinger, thank you so thank much you for much. being with us. Thank you for bringing us the jet. We very much appreciate this. Much of the demilitarization process involves taking off panels and going into stuff where we can't take our cameras, but we are going to try to show you as much as we can. Neil, you're kind of in charge of the D-Mill on this aircraft. Tell us a little bit about your background. My role here today, I'm overseeing one, getting the aircraft here uh, safely, and then two, ensuring that we're doing everything we're doing properly and safely, so that way we can deliver everything over to you, put it on display safely for the public. Being as this was the last flight specifically for this aircraft, but it's also wrapping up the Harrier program, what's it like for you to kind of fold things up and get them finished? Each aircraft's a little bit different, but with last flights, especially specific Bunos, uh, depending on how long they've been in a squadron, it can be a bit emotional at times. Um, you, you grow attached to them. You know, you start to, to learn their quirks, but with, with each one of these, as we're going and 
um, putting in the museums, that's probably one of the best things we can do with them uh, as far as final flights go. This squadron is going to eventually move on and become an F-35 squadron as all Harrier squadrons have done so far. And within the next few years, all Harriers will have converted over to the F-35. Tell us a little bit about the, the demilling process for the aircraft to get it ready to go into a museum. So the demilitarization process on the aircraft, it's, it's fairly extensive. Uh, some of the biggest pieces with that, I need a sizable team, approximately 20 Marines to come out here to be able to perform these actions. Some of the stuff that we do, uh, removing all of the explosives, primarily from the seat and canopy from the aircraft, because we can't put an aircraft into a museum that still has live explosives into it. We need to purge uh, all of the hazardous materials out of the aircraft, so um, batteries, hydraulic fluid, oil, fuels, all that has to come out of the aircraft because we can't have any of that stuff leaking out while it's sitting on display in a museum. And beyond that, we remove sensitive components from the aircraft, stuff that the government wants to continue to retain for either future use or components that are not suitable to be outside of uh, the government's hands. Sergeant Faith Peel has been an airframes mechanic with VMA 231 for four years and is helping demilitarize Harrier jets. For airframe specifically, we would deservice the aircraft struts, fully compress them, deservice the number one hide and number two, the brakes as well, and taking out the emergency blowdown bottle. Uh, we've got this jet and then two others that we're going to demil um, while we're out here. Uh, just going through that process, making sure we're doing our job pretty quickly but efficiently. I was on one before this for the Texas steam mill, and that one we, we got done pretty quick. It was less than a day. Make sure it looks clean, pretty. It's got all the fasteners in it. Talk a little bit about the teamwork, because uh, I say you have Marines from different shops working on the aircraft, and they all have to come together. It takes a lot of teamwork. Um, a lot of the different shops interplay with each other, so it's a lot of coordination and um, communication. Uh, just maintaining that and making sure that we're not getting over on top of each other. We're working together pretty well, trying to make sure everything gets done. One of the reasons why we're like, we work so well together and we overlap so well is because most of us have been working together with each other for the last couple of years. People that came out here with us, I've known since 2022, 2021. We got a good history of working together and then just being willing to help Sitting around is not really something that we like doing, so we try and jump in, even if there's too many bodies for what we need to do. Later today, it'll look like a, a bunch of bees flying around a hive here working on this aircraft as we start de-paneling and then starting to actually rip into the guts a bit and start removing components from the aircraft. That work will continue right up until us finishing here. Neil, in the process of demilling here, you're basically taking stuff that's all internal so that it's not going to affect the, the look of the aircraft. Visually from the outside, this aircraft will look just as a Harrier would on our flight line. Everything that we're pulling out is strictly underneath panels that the public is not going to see. I mean, when you walk into your museum and see this aircraft, you're going to see the F-402 engine in that aircraft. You're going to see the heads-up display in the aircraft. You're going to see the seat in the aircraft. Looking at the aircraft, it's going to look like an intact Harrier, and uh, I couldn't think of a better way to display the aircraft than in that format. I've been to a number of museums, and sometimes the aircraft aren't quite as complete as that, and I think this one will be a fine addition to your museum. What do you feel is the legacy of the Harrier you know, as we go forward and the impact that it had on, as example, the F-35 project? The F-35 Bravo was the centerfold. That was a must-have for the Marine Corps to continue being able to have um, Marine Expeditionary units that had a fixed-wing platform on there to be able to continue the role of the Harrier. That was a deliberate choice that was made. That is the Harrier's legacy is and how it will carry on in the form of the F-35. At least in my mind, what I'll remember about it is that working on it, it's not as easy as it looks. A lot of it is in difficult spots that some of the more modernized aircraft aren't. Um, they're, they're more accessible and it's easy to work on. And then just such an old bird, it's, it's got a lot of history to it, it's been through a lot. And just that in itself, it's a point of pride for the Marine Corps. Once the demil process was complete, the next challenge was transporting the jet to wings over the Rockies. While we would have loved to have the new bird land here in front of the museum, things aren't always that easy. In order to make the journey, we had to take the wings off, load up two flatbeds, and drive nine miles from Buckley Space Force Base to its new home. Once at the museum, the aircraft was lowered, and then the reassembly process began. 
thanks to the help of the Marines and some very skilled volunteers, Wings Harrier is ready for you to come and see on the museum floor. We couldn't cover everything, so if you have any questions or comments, just leave them under the video and we'll get to as many as we can. We've reached the end of the video. Now, if you're a subscriber, we want to say thank you. And if you're not, well, hey, just do it already, okay? Now, I got to get back to work with my new friend here. Talk to you soon.